Nezreen Al Shamale is at that conference by the Dead Sea. Nezreen, so what have they been focusing on? Well, Folly, it's it focuses on a range of uh, business issues, mainly, especially in the Middle East and North Africa, and how to help emerging markets. But because of the political situation in the region, there is no doubt that issues like the conflict in Syria, as well as the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, are always brought up. And one of the sessions we attended was called Safeguarding Syria. It discussed the social, economic, and humanitarian implications of the war there. And with me to talk about this more is the Middle East Director of Human Human Rights Watch, Sarah Leah Whitson. Your organization has uh, uh, done a lot of research and has documented many of the human rights abuses and violations in Syria. Firstly, if you could please tell us where these uh, uh, findings uh, happened and, uh, and uh, what can you tell us? Who's committed them? Um, well, we have been on the ground in Syria to document violations of human rights and international humanitarian law. And we've been on the ground in Syria for over 18 months, in and out of the country. And what we have uh, documented uh, since that period of time is wide-scale indiscriminate attacks and in some cases deliberate attacks on civilians by Syrian government forces. We've also documented the indiscriminate use of cluster bomb munitions uh, in rebel-held areas, uh, rebel-controlled areas uh, of the country. Uh, we've documented wide-scale arrests, detentions, and torture. And in fact, just a few weeks ago, uh, our team was in Raqqa, where uh, in one of the intelligence facilities that they visited, which had come under the control of the opposition, uh, we found evidence of torture devices, uh, devices used to stretch uh, and torture detainees uh, to force them into confessions. What about allegations of rebels using um, or resorting to violence and some of your the documented crimes that rebels are responsible for? Uh, what do you think of that and, and how does it compare to the uh, so-called uh, crimes committed by the Syrian government? Uh, there is no doubt that uh, Syrian rebel groups, various armed groups, are committing gross violations of international humanitarian law. Uh, we have documented many instances of these, uh, including uh, torture, uh, deaths in custody, uh, deaths uh, and killings of uh, captured government soldiers, uh, kidnappings, suicide bombings, uh, and uh, uh, some other offenses. Uh, and I think these are very serious and grave offenses, but it is important to keep them in the context of the reality, uh, which is that the magnitude of the crimes committed committed by the government, of the offenses committed by the government, grossly outweighs, uh, just in sheer scale and numbers, uh, abuses committed by some rebel armed groups. From a humanitarian perspective, uh, from a perspective of human rights abuses, what do you think needs to be done to address these, uh, what you call gross violations of human rights? Uh, well, obviously, the gross violations of human rights have to stop, uh, and that is uh, sadly part of a very uh, uh, long-term process of trying to figure out how to stop the violence uh, and how to end uh, these violations of international humanitarian law. But there are immediate urgent things that the international community in particular can do uh, and hasn't been doing enough of. Uh, one thing we'd like to see a lot more of is cross-border aid, uh, aid that actually reaches the civilians uh, who are in rebel-held areas and who are not getting the benefit of of uh, UN distributed aid, uh, which goes through government channels. Uh, we'd also like to see the international community move to push uh, for uh, international, uh, international criminal court uh, referral of the situation in Syria. Um, we think that ultimately uh, we need to document and account for uh, these crimes that are being committed and we hold, have to hold the perpetrators responsible. Thank you very much. There you have it. That's a snapshot of where the uh, humanitarian international community uh, thinks of the situation inside Syria and what they've been discussing at one of the sessions here at the Dead Sea.